For those of you who aren't aware, which there's a good chance you're not because I am at a different stage in my athletic career now than I was years ago, but I used to be a gymnast. Um, gymnastics was something I took very seriously for close to, I don't know, 10 years of my life when I was younger. Uh, I had to quit personally due to too many injuries. It was like injury after injury after injury, some of which I'm still dealing with today. Um, I have like a really bad neck and back that sometimes will just flare up, but I legitimately cannot move. So, um, my gymnastics days came to an end. Uh, I never made it to the level, of course, in which you see some of these ultra elite athletes making it to. That would be national teams, world teams, Olympic teams. Um, but I still have so much respect for gymnasts. And gymnastics is definitely one of my favorite sports to watch, whether um, it's the Olympics or otherwise. But that's why I'm super pumped for the Paris Olympics, because I'm so excited to see the gymnastics team do their thing. Now, while I'm super excited to watch the gymnastics team do their thing, there is one person who has been actually offering quite a bit of criticism as far as this year's gymnastics team in Paris is concerned. The five really talented women who will be taking those spots, which include, of course, a name that all of us know at this point in time, Simone Biles. Uh, the gymnast, former gymnast that's doling out this criticism at this point, now having to walk it back a bit with lots of apologies because people completely came for her, is Michaela Skinner. Now, Michaela Skinner won a silver medal on the vault at the Tokyo Olympics, which took place in 2021, supposed to have been in 2020, but due to the COVID pandemic, pushed to August of 2021. She decided to put up a YouTube video earlier this week, earlier this past week, talking about how Safe Sport, which is a organization that was formed in light of all of the Larry Nassar sexual assault abuse allegations, which he was ultimately convicted of. So not just allegations, but, you know, this whole sexual abuse scandal that really rocked the athletic world, specifically the gymnastics world, um, after he was accused of under the guise of, you know, being a medical doctor and in performing necessary medical treatments on these girls and in checking them out. It was actually sexually assaulting them. There was an organization formed called Safe Sport. Well, what Michaela Skinner decided to say was that Safe Sport is making it difficult for coaches to do their jobs, which is why she said that this year's Olympic team doesn't have as much depth and as much talent as past teams because coaches aren't able to be as harsh on them. So if you can't be as harsh on your athletes, ultimately they won't turn out to be as good of athletes as, in a nutshell, what she was saying. Uh, Skinner, she said they, they, they can't get on the athletes. Uh, she actually had a quote uh, that now is making its rounds, specifically talking about why this year's team isn't as talented as the result of coaches not, not being able to be as tough on the athletes. Here's what she said. But besides Simone, I feel like the talent and the depth just isn't like what it used to be. I just notice like I mean, obviously, a lot of girls don't work as hard. The girls just don't have the work ethic. Like, and it's hard, too, because a safe sport. Like, coaches can't get on athletes, and they have to be really careful what they say, which in some ways is really good. But at the same time, to get to where you need to be in gymnastics, you do have to be, I feel like, a little aggressive and a little intense. Okay, so here's the thing. Michaela Skinner should not have said that. Obviously, she should not have thrown Safe Sport out there. Uh, Safe Sport was formed for very good reason, and if it didn't exist, who knows what kind of horrible circumstances these gymnasts could still find themselves under. Uh, especially Simone Biles, who she did come to the defense of. She said besides Simone Biles, who, by the way, Skinner and Biles have a very long history together in the sport of gymnastics that spans over the course of years. Now, Simone took exception to this, obviously, even though her name wasn't called out as being one of the gymnasts that maybe lacked the depth and the talent. Uh, but Simone very quickly went on to threads to defend the rest of her team and threw some shade while she was at it at Michaela Skinner, saying very just precisely, very simply, not everyone needs a mic and a platform. 
Which really goes a long way to say that even though Michaela Skinner is an Olympic winning gymnast, the idea that she has a platform now isn't necessary. And if she's not going to use it for good, she shouldn't have it at all. Uh, I tend to agree with Simone here because specifically Simone was one of the pe people, one of the gymnasts that came forward to testify against Larry Nasser. Uh, again, the USA Gymnastics doctor who was convicted of first-degree sexual assault uh, because she was somebody that firsthand suffered at the hands of Larry Nasser. So for her, Michaela, who's supposed to be a close friend, a, an ally, a, a teammate, to say something like this, to throw safe sport under the bus as a result, you know, and then claiming it's the reason why gymnasts aren't as talented, uh, Simone obviously felt very offended by. So... With all of this criticism that Michaela Skinner doled out, not really having the effect that she hoped it would had, now she's having to walk it back. She's now offering so much apology, you know, so many, so many apologetic comments. And I'm happy that she's doing it. Uh, I don't know that I necessarily take all that what she's saying, you know, seriously. I think sometimes people just offer apologies because they didn't get the reaction that they wanted to get. But here's what Michaela has said in light of all of the criticism that she is now receiving in return. She said, quote, upon reflection, I was comparing the, quote, Marta era to the current era. I am coming to terms that I have not fully dealt with the emotional and verbal abuse I endured under Marta that perhaps led to my hurtful comments. I took full responsibility for what I said. And um, unfortunately, I can't really read the last part because there's something on the screen. Um, and I deeply, you know, obviously still going on to note her uh, extreme apology. Uh, now, when she talks about Marta, uh, she's talking about Marta Caroli, um, who is one of the longtime gymnastics coaches. Uh, you probably have heard the name Bella Caroli. That was her husband, who also was coaching alongside her at one point. Uh, Marta Caroli was the U.S. national team coordinator. And Caroli was found to have, you know, not have been guilty of sexual assault, but uh, her methods of coaching were found to be a bit too brutal, uh, a bit too forceful. Uh, but that's kind of the era that Marta Caroli and Bella Caroli grew up coaching in. Uh, I remember when I was a huge gymnastics fan, I was a big fan of the Magnificent Seven. That was the 1997 gymnastics squad that competed uh, in the Olympics in Atlanta. And they were coached by, many of them were coached year-round by the Crowleys, uh, and they were a part of the Olympic coaching squad as well. Um, so I really do think that, you know, part of which Michaela was speaking under was just that she did go through a different era, right? When you are used to something different than other people are experiencing, maybe you have a little bit of judgment to pass. I can totally understand that. And she probably was coached with a bit more force. Uh, it probably, her coaching was probably a bit more intense, uh, which allowed her to be maybe a tougher skinned athlete. Uh, maybe she thought that it allowed her to be more successful than some of the gymnasts now who maybe are babied a bit more, but that's because of what happened in the gymnastics world. There are now, you know, rules that these coaches have to follow and probably they're not allowed to be as tough on the athletes. That probably is true. So, um, you know, while I understand what Michaela was saying, Probably not the right way to go about, you know, allowing other people to understand how you're feeling and certainly using safe sport as a reason as to why these gymnasts maybe aren't as, quote, talented in your eyes definitely wasn't the method to go about it in. Uh, but Simone obviously has bigger fish to fry. She's headed to Paris for the Olympics. She is looking to um, capture another medal for our country after not competing in the um in the Tokyo Olympics because she got the twisties, which, by the way, Michaela filled in for her at that point in time on vault. So now Simone Biles ready to do her thing. She's feeling comfortable. She's feeling secure. And I wish her and the rest of the team the best of luck as they depart for Paris. Uh, not going to Paris. Moi. Like how I did that little that little French one-liner there. Also not going to Paris, unfortunately, is my guest on today's show, which you all know very well. He's the big guns. He is Mike Gunzelman, and he's coming on right now. So, Guns, uh, you and I both not heading to Paris, but it looks like, wow. At the beach. What tropical paradise I... are you in? <laughs> My own mind. 
Let me tell you what, Charlie, wow. in my mind, I am living my best on the beach, far away from Paris and from France. But uh, yeah. Oh my no, goodness. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful day today here at, uh, uh, in Hawaii, I guess. Maybe I'll be in Hawaii. Charlie, yeah, what's wherever, your, wherever what's your you want to be, beach? it's a beautiful Charlie, day. What, what's the, what's your favorite beach you've ever been to? Are you a big Miami beach fan or what? Favorite beach I've ever been to? Oh, wow. Um, Okay, favorite beach I've ever been to was probably the beach in Antigua was gorgeous. It was like crystal clear water, white sand. So I would maybe go with Antigua, but I did dress for the beach today. So I think I knew that you were going to come with your like beachy vibe. I wore my beachy vibe dress today. Okay, guns. I don't know. Do you watch gymnastics in the Olympics or otherwise when it's on television, whether it's national competitions, whatever it might be? Okay, gymnastics is one of the most fun sports to watch. It's just like so compelling. These girls, in my mind, ultra talented. So actually, when Michaela called the Olympic team not quite as talented, I was kind of like, wait a second. Yeah. What are you talking about? These are literally the most talented gymnasts in the United States. Um, And then she throughout safe sport which obviously was the organization created after all of the right. sexual assault uh you know scandals came to light what did you think about michaela skinner when she said these things and then the fact that she did offer an apology does it really mean anything yeah no I, I, there's a couple of things going on here uh first um do i religiously watch uh gymnastics no am i going to be excited every single time it comes across on the uh, olympics of course i remember carrie strug you know what I mean? Carrie Strug. Carrie one greatest, Strug, uh, yes. One of the greatest individual performances ever across any single sport, where she went out there literally with one leg and was able to land it. I mean, that is what the Olympics is about. That's what that is just that's just what just sports and uh athleticism and everything is about and self-perseverance and everything. That's the pinnacle of what you should all strive to be when you get to that level. Carrie Strug, uh, that determination and everything was amazing. Now, what I think that we have here is is a couple different things because what what what's do I believe there is an issue here with like participation trophy society and all that for younger generations? Absolutely. But yeah. that doesn't have to do with what she's saying because she went very out of her lane here with her comments. The fact that she's using safe sport, I mean, really, you're gonna justify something that's probably one of the better things to come based on the decades and decades and decades of abuse across gymnastics and of course across dancing and more probably not a good look especially for someone who's dealt with that so i think that you know this it, 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 she comes across as kind of the uh, the angry ex employee you know and uh, the the employee gets fired and then just starts ripping and criticizing all the changes that happened at the company or the network or whatever it might be or the team in this instance and it just comes across as uh as kind of lame um and, and and um and not justified i think is another w- way to say it as well because she went You know wrong what's on- interesting though it's it's interesting though because i would totally get if she was you know, she she didn't make the team this year. Like, that would be one thing where she's like, oh, this team is is lame. They don't even have the depth. You know, I, I can't believe I didn't make it. But she retired after the Tokyo Olympics. So it's kind of like, I don't know. Why are you so angry, right? You decided I mean, to retire. It's her own fault. Yeah, well, not her own fault, but it was her own decision to do this. Now, does she have regret almost kind of a traumatic thing coming back again. She's seeing everybody else go overseas and doing the media and doing the press and knowing that once again, it's coming back around the Olympics and she's not a part of it. So she can't fully deal with those, with those feelings. She, she went wrong on two things here. One saying the work ethic or they're not as tough. Like, what are you talking about there? Charlie, I went through the thing that, that, you know, who we have on the team this year, we have three gold medalists. All right. We've got Simone Biles, we got Suni Lee. We got Jade Carey. We got a silver medalist in Jordan Giles again. We also have the youngest person. And this is going to be really exciting to watch. The youngest person on all of Team USA across all the sports is the 16-year-old, all right? 16 years old. Her name is Hesley Rivera, okay? She is dominant, dominant on the balance beam. She just won the Winter Cup balance just a couple months ago. She's 16 years old, who, like, that— Clearly, she was taught, right? 
You know what I mean? Clearly, she was able to get through it. I think there's underlining issues here because I just named four plus medalists that we have here to say that it's just Simone Biles and then just a bunch of random people isn't true. But also, if you watch that whole entire thing that Michaela did, I'm not going to say purposely, but the whole entire time she mispronounces Esri Rivera's name. And it's like, if you can't even get the names right of the competitors, you've lost me on all, on all your arguments there. And also, you got to realize that you're dealing with somebody, Michaela Skinner, back in 2016 when she was named an alternate, by the way, Charlie. She put up a photo on her Twitter with her picture over Gabby, Gabby Douglas's face. So that's the kind of person that you're dealing with. She's shown signs of jealousy in the past. For her to bring up safe sport, for her to question the uh, the work ethic, you just come across almost like a sore loser here. I don't think, listen, you know, there's a, this ain't it. This ain't it, kid. You might have your own uh, transgressions and, 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 and problems with it, but this ain't it. This is, you're not going to win here. You're not going to win here. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, it just it wasn't the right messaging to put out. And in fact, there was another gymnast who um, was one who came forward to testify against Larry Nasser. Her name is Rachel Den Hollander. And she said when an athlete reminisces about one of the most abusive coaches in gymnastics history, suggesting her abusive model was necessary for work ethic. We have a problem. And that was kind of what I was alluding to in the beginning. Right. Like. Just because you experience something um, doesn't mean it's the model that everyone has to go through, especially in light of all of the horrible, um, horrible. you know, sexual assault um, cases that things. took place yeah. uh, to these to these young girls in, in these in these very talented gymnasts who probably forever will be scarred in one way or another as a result of it. But uh, needless to say, Michaela Skinner aside, we're not going to let her reign on our parade. I'm pumped to watch the gymnastics portion of the Olympics. That's more than likely one of the only sports that I will actually watch. I was going to ask in, uh, I was gonna the Olympics. Ask although you, I'm going to I'm going to tune into some water polo. I'm going to tune into some water polo because water of one polo. of our previous guests. But other, yeah. yeah, we had a previous guest. Her name is yeah. escaping me at this point in time, but she um, is like was hyping up the the water polo in the Olympics, and okay. Flavor Flav is backing. Do you know that Flavor Flav is backing the water polo team this year, the women's water polo team in the Olympics? Listen, Flavor Flav is uh, whatever he's behind, I'll get behind, too, because I love that man. Her name I is Maggie that. Steffens, by the way, if you want to watch nice. her guns. Yeah, no, so I, I want to ask you this. Um, you know, we are a couple, just a, literally just a couple of weeks away from the uh, from the Olympics. Do you, I don't feel that there's nearly as much buzz coming all across. I hope that it, I, I hope that it kind of picks up. There was, there's no better feeling than, like, say, going to a bar and having some sort of Team USA sport up there and everyone being invested in whatever it might be, whatever it might be. I don't care if it, during the Winter Olympics, I don't care if it's curling. You know, it could be it could be whatever it is, just because it's got that sort some sort of American pride. I wonder if it's not nearly as is popular right now. It's because of the way the direction of the country that's going, the, the cr country's going right now. The fact that there are, I don't that think it many, has anything there's, to do with the no country. Michael Phelps. There's no like, like besides Simone Biles yeah. and a couple, like, is there no major star power that we're all getting behind? And, you know, swimming, swimming is obviously a huge, huge sport, obviously every single time. Um, do we have to see somebody hopefully, you know, rise to the occasion? Um, you know, exactly. Yeah, that's what it. I was going to say. I don't think it has anything to do with like the politics in the country or people lacking patriotism. I, I truly don't even think that's what it was ever really. I mean, I think there were certain instances that we right. saw like people like ultra USA proud uh, as a result of things that happened in the Olympics. But I just feel like most people aren't watching TV as much as they used to. Like they're not watching regular programming where like the Olympics were really publicized and they were marketed. Like right now, everyone's watching Netflix and all the streaming platforms. And so it's like half the time, I don't even know what's going on in regular television. You know what I mean? Unless like it's like a, a, a major a mainstream sport is having. <laughs> no, but no, but seriously, I feel like people just aren't aware of things that are going on in the country as much because they're not watching regular programming. Like people aren't watching the news nearly right. as much as they used to. People aren't watching cable. People aren't watching, you know, a lot of people are just watching Hulu and Netflix and all that. And I feel like they're on, that, they're on their own as a result, world. they're not yeah. really. 
Yeah, they're exactly they're in their own world, and it's not even when I'm scrolling on social media. I'm seeing barely any Olympic content. Like I just feel like yeah. there's not the publicity that it used to get. And yeah. and again, also I think like you mentioned, I think there's not like that one like superstar athlete that people were like, oh my god, I have to watch this person and see how they perform. Right. Yeah, I, I, I could I could give you that for sure. Like obviously we'll have Simone Biles, and and you know there are a couple of swimmers here and there, but yeah. Nothing, uh, nothing huge on that. I'm very curious to see if our basketball team, <laughs> I don't know how our basketball team is going to do. I mean, we're supposed to dominate here and there. Um, you know, I, there's no guarantee. There's all, you know, there's not a guarantee that we might be as, uh, you know, there's no gold for sure for the, for the, uh, for the team USA, no dream team this year. Um, I don't believe so. I think I'm, mean, I'm going to be excited about it just because I love this country and I love America and I'm all about it. Like, yo, let's go, let's win on anything. Uh, I did find it funny. I did an article not too long ago on outkick that people can go check out. And, uh, Paris has had their issues, Charlie, um, uh, regarding some waste, uh, there, the, uh, you know, the <laughs> whole, it's, it's not, it's not a clean, uh, a clean place over there. These I think days. we've talked about this and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, we're supposed to have the triathlon. And there's still no guarantee that the triathlon might be happening because the water still has unsafe levels of bacteria from waste well, and all sorts of stuff in it that it might become a biathlon because they can't swim in it. And that's where we're at still well, about just a couple of weeks away. Well, guns, What's unfortunately, we have our own we have our own waste problems yeah. here in the United States as well. Yeah. Uh, and at the source of it. Seems to be our president, but Whoopi Goldberg does not care. Listen to what she said. I don't care if he's pooped his pants. I don't care if he can't put a sentence together. Show me he can't do the job. And then I'll say, OK, maybe it's time to go. OK, first of all, none of that made sense. OK. Let's break this you down. Think? She does not care if he poops his pants, which is like Yikes. um crazy. And then she's like, I don't care if he can't string a sentence together. Also crazy. And then she's like, show me he can't do his job. Well, newsflash, Whoopi, I've he's, you know, pooping his pants, which is just a really weird thing to say um out loud, and he can't string a sentence together. I would say he can't do his job. I mean, those two things probably don't equate to a very successful commander in chief and leader of the free world. That's just me, guns. But obviously, I mean, she's looking for every excuse she can to, you know, tell viewers and convince herself that Biden is still the right person to run this country, which I think it's very clear he is not. Yeah, I think this is exactly what's wrong. I think that many people become frustrated with. Uh, when it comes, I think level-headed, real Americans out there become frustrated that it's party over every, anything else. Um, you know, that rather than be real and look at the uh, the situation that is uh, currently dealt upon us right now, when you have asinine comments like Whoopi Goldberg just did on that hideous and horrific show that uh, Barbara Walters is probably spinning in her grave uh, for how much it's fallen. Um, and it's just, uh, you know, just uh, Sonny Holson is, is a disgrace as far as I'm concerned with the things that she says on that show and the things she makes up. And it's, it's unbelievable. Um, it's just it's desperate for uh, to try and be relevant once again. And uh, Whoopi, yeah, the whole the pooping, the pants thing was it was weird. Uh, I don't no idea where you're getting with that. But also um, it goes beyond. I think the bigger question that. Uh, Whoopi needs to answer is if we have a president that can't even effectively debate, how do we have a president that can effectively lead the country? And I think that's what more people have to ask. Uh, you know, if there's already this inner turmoil that's already happening within the country, guess what? We still are within their own party, I should say. It's only July. We've got many more months coming, and it doesn't look like it's getting any better. I don't know if you saw the White House press conference yesterday. That was a mess. Our press secretary has no idea what's going on. Mess. He is clueless out there. And also, I would say this. When Donald Trump in 2020 got COVID, okay? But that's not have, that's nothing no, new. On, on, KJP no, no, no. is like known as one of the worst press secretaries. It's probably right, the right. worst press secretary in history. Keep going. Okay, uh, Fine, I'll give you that. But 
Now you have a situation where the whole entire country saw that clearly there's something cognitively wrong with our president right there, and we need answers. Even the you know the the press was going after her on both sides right now because you can't hide it. They were able to hide it, I think perhaps even cover it up for so long now. But once it got out there, the one thing that Joe Biden couldn't do during that elect during the uh, press conference or during the debate, I should say, he did, and he screwed up. Horribly, because this world and the social media age lives on optics, and he blew it, and now they don't know what to do. So when she's being pressed on it, the fact that they don't have an answer or that they're not willingly able to tell the American people about the doctors and who visited and what's actually happening is so wrong. And it's only, guess what? It's only going to continue to uh, pile on against them. And I would leave with this, is the fact that when Donald Trump in 2020 got covid Every single day, the, they, they had the doctor up there. They had, remember, they had that that famous uh, the video of all his medical staff up there, and they were grilling him, grilling, grilling, grilling. What about this? What about this? Is he fit to serve? Fit to lead? Anything like that? Where is that now? It's starting to slowly yeah. start happening right now. But why was it okay to question the hell out of Trump's doctors and that whole entire situation? And now they're nowhere to be found. And you got KJP up there just trying to. Uh, I don't I would say navigate, but it's going straight to the ground. There's no navigation going on right now. Yeah, I mean, it's very clear that. Biden is not well, I mean, it's just, you know, and it's and it's sad. It's not um, it's not something to make fun of. I mean, it's there's a lot no, of comedy that comes along yeah. with. No, yeah, there's a lot of comedy that comes along with you know, the stumbles that he makes and the gaffes that he has, because even, for example, uh, his latest stumble that he made about Trump golfing, which let's just throw up uh, as an example of, of one of his latest incidents where he doesn't quite know what he's talking about. Here it is. I'm curious, is that an allusion also to Donald Trump and the fact that Democrats, you believe, may now be doing the same thing that Donald Trump tried to do in, in 2020, and that is overthrow the popular will of Democratic voters? Well, look, Democrat, let me, Joe, let me say it this way. The reason I've been on the road so much all over the country, and while Trump is riding around in his golf cart, filling out his golf cart before, golf cart before he even hits the ball. But anyway, he hadn't been anywhere in 10 days. I've been all over the country. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean <laughs> it's, the thing it's is that like, it's, it's, it's funny. It's hilarious, in fact. But when you when you like think about the greater issue, like Biden is not well. He should not be the president of this country, let alone like allowed to be speaking. I mean, even like making decisions that like put our country in major jeopardy is one thing. But even just going on national television and making statements, he's not even able to do that, nor should he be put in that position anymore. Like it's just gotten to be like so ridiculous that this is our president and that they're putting him in the position where they know he's not going to do well. He has to have a teleprompter or he or even when we've seen him have a teleprompter, he can't make it through sentences anymore. Right. I mean, as far as clips go, I mean, that is just what I mean. He has said what it's, hundreds, almost, it's thousands. almost that we, be, we become numb to it. I mean, it, it's uh, numb to and that and. Honestly, that's pretty sad that we have become numb to things like that. But that uh, a, a statement like that, just we know he fumbles his word. Like that doesn't phase me. It's, it's it, for me, for, more so for me, it's uh, the rest of the country finally being able to see what many that actually follow politics and follow the news were able to see in the last year plus. And that was what happened at the debate. And that there's clearly more underlining issues going here. And I would like to say this to everybody out there, because now you're seeing this a lot from um, 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 more so uh, liberal leaning uh, press outlets out there is they're all they're they're realizing that things are going too great right now because uh what Kamala like is that is that really the option that's going to happen right now like what what are we going to do so they're trying to deflect right now and you're starting to see this come up they're like well where's Trump where's Trump why isn't Trump doing anything now I would like to they should read the art of war because Trump is doing exactly what he needs to do right now the famous quote in the art of war is never interrupt your enemy while they are making a mistake so if I'm Donald Trump, I am sitting back and letting this S show continue 
and just riding with that. Now, he did go on a Hannity last night. He's purposely not announcing a VP or anything. No reason for him not, uh, to announce the VP right now. Why draw more attention yeah. on yourself? No matter who he picks, it's good. Like, don't change the narrative right now. Right now, it is all eyes on what the hell's happening in the Oval Office right now. And that is what Donald Trump is doing right now. So for Biden to be like, oh, he's on the golf course. No, he's letting you sink your own ship. Uh, that is exactly what's happening. And you're right. It's smart. It's good strategy, right? Let let the, the Democrats dig themselves into a deeper hole. Let it happen. Let it marinate. And then next week when people are ready to move on and, you know, enough has been said, that's when you announce your VP pick. Right now, keep the attention on what's going on. This is perfect. This is actually playing right into Trump's hands. Um, so whoever on his team made the ultimate decision, let's hold off on making this this announcement, uh, props to them. They have very uh, smart and talented people working under him. Now, Biden is 81 years old. Dick Vitale, not so much older. He's 85. Uh, he actually can speak much more eloquently than Joe Biden, as we know uh, from his very illustrious career as a sports commentator and broadcaster. Uh, unfortunately, he was diagnosed with cancer for the fourth time guns. Um, he did just have surgery yesterday. Um, he had a cancerous lymph node in his neck. Um, <clears throat> so he went in for surgery and he had great news. He said, I had post a, a post-surgical exam by neck surgeon, Dr. Vosler. He removed drain in my neck, plus said healing process from removing cancerous lymph node is going well. He strongly recommends what? six weeks of radiation treatments to wipe out any cancer cells in the area of the cancerous lymph node. So Dick Vitale is one of those people, and honestly, Joe Biden could be one, too, if he were to step aside at the right time, right? Sweet, sweet old guy that you just respect for what he does and you want nothing but the best for. Uh, Dick Vitale, though, is he's great. Yeah, um, we love Dickie. I, mean, I yeah. have a lot of memories watching him yeah. uh, in the booth. I mean, he always comes through with the with the greatest comments and, you know, the one liners that we will forever, oh, pro so probably forever will, will be repeated by other way, announcers. Baby. Let's go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's Dick Vitale. I mean, I mean so generation. happy to hear his cancer surgery went well. Very excited. Felt uh, I, I feel so bad for him. You know, like you mentioned, this is the fourth time he's had it. Even like 2021, it's melanoma, lymphoma. Then, he, you know, uh, treatment goes well. He think he's cancer free. Boom. Then something else. Even with this latest one, he thought he was in the clear uh, and was just on vocal rest. You know, we, we actually had done a, a story about him over on Outkick. And uh, and got got exclusive uh, uh, quotes from him and everything. He's just like, yes, like I'm resting up. I can't wait to do basketball. And then literally like a week and a half later, boom, he announces on the social media that uh, you know that they found uh, uh, you know uh, that he had to go undergo um, more um, surgeries regarding uh, the lymph nodes and everything. Uh, if there's one person that can unite this country, it's Dick Vitale, and uh, we're all wishing him the best. Generational broadcaster that has you know you want to talk about great grandparents grandparents parents and kids dicky v has done it all and uh we're obviously rooting for him because he just comes across as just such a a lovable person that's been able to entertain us and also call some of the greatest um basketball college basketball games in history yeah. that millions upon millions of people have been able to see so we're wishing the best for dick vital i mean listen if anything he's proven that he's he's what's he 80 He's 85 right now, and he's being. I mean, a, that's what I was going to say. 85, so geez. I mean, this guy is. He's. I mean, listen. He's not in the. He's not in the best shape that he was at one point. But to be 85, Keep on fighting. and to still be. He, we love Dick Vita. And no one will ever replace him. Huge, huge shoes to fill. Ultimately, um, when he does like officially uh, retire for good. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, Dick Vitale at 85. Probably could do a better job as president of this country, uniting all of us there and uh, certainly speaking better <laughs> than our current president. So that is where we land here at the oh, end yeah. of today's show, at least the end of our time together, Guns, which I got to let you go because it looks like you're missing some great sun out there. I don't yeah. you know, I would hate to drag you away from the beach for too long. I'm, I'm going off to Margaritaville. going to have some <laughs> pina coladas. Let's go. You know, let's, I'll, I'll be on well, the Well, you beach. enjoy those Where guns. Where are you going to be at? Down by the beach. All right. I'll see you there. Down by the bay. All right, guns. We will catch you on the flip side. Yeah.
Um, okay, everybody, before you go, uh, last year, I remember there was like this point in time that concerts started getting really dangerous. Like people decided it was smart to throw items at the performers, at the artists. It was happening like every single day, it felt like. And I think leading the way was BB Rexa. She had an iPhone. Someone stupid enough to throw an iPhone at her on stage. Like, I'm not letting go of my phone. Uh, but she got hit in the face, as you can see here. She responded very precisely with the words, I'm good, which is also one of her songs. So good on you, BB Rexa. Nice pun. Um, but now it happened again to her, this time not with an iPhone, but another object being attempted to be thrown at her while she was performing on stage. And she had something to say about it. If you hit me with something on the stage, I will take you for every not play with me right now. Which one? Which one? Point to the person. I want to see them. If Out. Get the out. That's it. It's done for you. Out of the Oh my God, how, okay, first of all, like, idiot, why would you throw something at BB Rex? You're at her concert. If you're not a fan, why are you even there? Uh, B, how embarrassing, right? Like, let's say you were drunk or something and, like, thought it would be funny at the time to, like, throw something. To be shamed by the whole crowd, to be shamed by the artist on the microphone, she just completely calls you out and then have to be kicked out of the, the concert venue. Oh my God. I never want that for myself, but I'm also not stupid enough or rude enough to throw something at someone on stage. Like, that's never going to happen. Anyways, good job, BB Rexa. I hope that other artists follow in your same footsteps and let's shame each and every person that acts that disrespectful at a concert or really anywhere. Can we just start giving the same disrespect to people that offer disrespect uh, during their daily lives? Because I feel like in New York City, there's a lot of people that deserve some disrespect right now. Uh, and hopefully we can kick them all out of New York City. I think it would be a much more pleasant place to live. Uh, but that's not going to happen right now. At least circling back, not under our current president. Okay, everybody, we have come full circle. Thank you so much for being here. What a lovely show it was. Uh, I wish that I could be on the same beach as Guns, even though we know that's not a real beach. Come on. Um, everybody, I hope if wherever you are, a beach, maybe you're on your porch, maybe you're inside, maybe you're just sitting on your phone that you're not throwing up on a stage at a concert before. Maybe you're just, maybe you're laying in bed. Wherever, wherever it is, I love that for you. And I can't wait to see you again tomorrow. In the meantime, make sure you're following me on social media at Charlie on TV. And I will see you later. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. As you know, the Woke Sports Media is in shambles and OutKick is on top. So make sure you're tuning into my show, OutKick the Morning, for your fill of sports, pop culture, politics, and everything in between. For more original content, make sure you're clicking here. And also make sure you're subscribing by clicking here. Everybody, thanks for watching. Catch more later.